Hello everyone, my name is Nina Bono Obdon and I'm a professor of learning and ICT at the University of Southern Denmark. I'm so happy to be invited to be a workshop lead for Hanford NL. Uh, my focus will be on the paper writing process and I'll say more about that in another vlog yet to be made. But I'm really happy to be participate in this first seminar workshop on the relationship between phenomenology and network learning. And what I'll talk about here is my Malapontian take on phenomenology and how we would approach network learning with a Malapontian point of view. One of Malapontian's basic points was that the way we experience a figure, the way we see a figure is as much uh, decided by the background of the figure as it is by the figure itself. And very often this is uh, illustrated with uh, a figure like this, the Peter Paul, uh, the Rubens vase or Peter Paul vase, where you can see that you can see the figure of uh, people, um, of the two persons talking, you can focus on that. And then the vase becomes a background. Uh, and without the vase, there would not be the figure of the two persons. On the other hand, without the two persons, there would not be the figure of the vase. Now, this is a, a nice illustration of the relevant relevance of, um, of background for figure. It shows that the figure uh, stands out from a background and the, that the background is uh, significant in shaping, shaping the figure. But one problem with this figure is that it's very uh, that it very easily misleads into thinking you can always just focus on the background and find out what the background does your, to your figure. And that this is actually a really rare case. The, that's why we have this ambiguous. The, that's why these kinds of pictures are interesting and fun because you can actually shift between figure and background. But usually in most of our uh, perception and living in the world, we do not just uh, shift between uh, perception of figure and, uh, and background, we actually only see the figure and we don't notice the background and or we don't, uh, and we certainly are not aware of the way the background influences the figure. So uh, for example, if you see this uh, road of trees, you see exactly this road of trees. You see the trees on the background of the air uh, and you don't think of the air as actually giving figure to the trees. Um, now you might say, well, that's obvious because the air is nothing. Well, it's not nothing, but uh, the air is in this sense, uh, there's nothing to see. But looking at another example here, the air is actually the figure and not the uh, the wall which the hole is in because here you the, um, the hole is what we hone in on and uh, the wall that the hole in will be the background for the figure of the whole, i.e. for the figure of nothing. So it's not that the case that air is always the background that we see figures on. That it, it, uh, the point is that our lived bodily being in the world decides what is relevant or what stands out as figure and what is the background on which um, the figure stands out. Um, so this is a, a Mary Pontian's point that our lived bodily being in the world is the origo or the third term that decides what is figure and what is background and also decides the way um, that background gives figure, gives shape to the figure. Um, so the, uh, this uh, role of the body is very often not obvious to us and neither is the role of the background in determining uh, the figure. And therefore the Husserlian notion of epoche is actually very problematic from the point of view uh, of Merleau-Ponty uh, as a way to perform phenomenological investigations because when we f perform epoche, we are looking at the figure and trying to found, uh, see the figure as it in, as, is in itself without our preconceptions of it. But the problem is that we do not see what determines that the figure stands out as figure in the way that it stands out as figure in the first place. So Meliponti, instead of doing epoche directly, or at, le at least or instead of doing epoche, he investigated breakdown situations, because when you're in a breakdown situation, it can become clear what the conditions and presuppositions of our experience are. 
And his focus was on describing perception as an integrated part of our embodied being in the world. So his focus was on psychological and brain disorders and their effect on perception, because by interviewing and observing uh, phenomena like that, um, he uh, 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 interviewing and observing breakdown situations, uh, he was able to highlight what the breakdown showed about conditions of normal perceptions. I mean, uh, per perceptions where you're uh, not uh, it, there's not any uh, psychological or brain disorder that hinders perception. And um, in my article, Affordances Revisited Articulating a Malapunctian View, uh, which was published in 2009 in the International Journal of Computer Supported Collaborative Learning, I give some examples of how studies of students' utilizations of the, the affordances of the material surroundings actually only investigate aspects of the figure, but fails to investigate the significance of the background uh, in determining the figure. For example, the, uh, the, the significance of participating in a, um, an experiment on learning situations where you're not actually there for solving a task, but where you're there uh, as, a, uh, as a participant to, uh, to investigate affordances of different materials and how that restricts and constrains what you can uh, what you uh, can actually do in the situation or what you would even dream or think of doing for example the uh, in one um, in one case uh, which i discuss in the, um, in the article a diet of uh, students got really annoyed with each other uh, and under normal circumstances circumstances of teamwork on an actual authentic task probably the student, the diet would have broken up and did uh, solve the track, uh, task um, uh, individually, but this was not really an option here, where it, the, the the point was to investigate diets, communication, of, uh, and uh, the affordances of um, of materials. So that's just one example of how honing in only on the figure may fail uh, to really enlighten what is at play here, and where the Malapontian uh, understanding of the way the background gives figure to the figure. It helps give figure to the uh, figure is decisive for giving figure to the, the figure. How that is also really important to investigate. Now, if we want to do uh, investigations within network learning from a Malapunctian point of view, it could be really interesting to investigate breakdown situations of online situations. For example, during uh, COVID lockdowns, uh, not perhaps so much to find out how we experience the figure of online situations, but more in terms of what we take for granted in our usual no learning situations, both the virtual ones and the physical uh, co-located uh, ones. And also what our ways of negotiating the breakdowns, what they show about what we usually take for granted. For example, uh, just to take a, um, a sort of rather crude example, uh, the way during COVID-19 learning situations have repeatedly been interrupted by family members entering the room and children crying or dogs and cats jumping on uh, onto them. Uh, the, the screen shows uh, those are breakdown situations that show how we would normally structure our learning around um, not having situations like that uh, possible. So we would go to specific rooms with our without our families being there or send the family out of the um, uh, of the office. So we would be, uh, of course, at a, uh, in our job situations. So uh, those breakdown situations of the COVID lockdown are interesting, not only, of course, they're also interesting in terms of highlighting the phenomenological experience in the Husserlian kind of uh, understanding of how uh, people have actually uh, experienced it in their lived experience, but it's also really important to take the Malapontian point of view and, see, uh, and look at how, what these breakdown situations show about our usual going on uh, and, and our usual learning situations, both the physical ones where we're actually uh, physically present with our um, uh, with our students and teachers, and also the virtual ones that usually no, don't break down in that way. And this will be the focus of the paper I intend to write for the Network Learning Conference in 2022, which has a deadline of submission for on October 8th this year, 2021, and which I will start working on at the workshop uh, um, in June. And as I said, for uh, advertisement of how we will proceed from the workshop in June at Hanford NL to uh, uh, the 
uh, network learning conference uh, submission and onto the conference. For, for further news on that, look to the vlog that I have not uh, uh, yet made, but which will soon be available. See you at, in June virtual and hopefully physically in 2022 at the Network Learning Conference.